This is my one wheel and I can finally ride it. I designed everything myself, from the smallest bracket to the mainframe. In this video I'll show you how it all comes together, but also will it hold up and is it even fun to ride? Because 6 months ago I didn't even know what a one wheel was and now my own board is standing finished in front of me. I'll show you how I built the parts, put everything together and finally test it. If you're interested in the electronics or the first steps, check out part 1 and 2 of my one wheel series. In this part I complete the build and take it for a test ride. Ok, let's get into it, starting with the motor mount. For milling, I'm using a single foot cutter with a DLC coating. It's actually meant for aluminium, but I have such good experience with this type of tool that I now use it for almost all my milling jobs. Even so, I bought it on AliExpress. I really can't complain about the quality. The material I'm using for this mount is Pomp C, a plastic that's especially tough, wear resistant and great to machine. In the long run, I did like to make this part out of aluminium, but since the design will probably still change a bit, it makes more sense for now to stick with the cheaper Pomp C. To protect the bed of my CNC, I didn't cut all the way through. So now I have to finish the job the old school way, with a bandsaw. The raw material was way thicker than what I actually need. So I'm trimming it down on the manual mill to the final thickness. The steps look clean, but trust me, it's chaos. Ships everywhere, steady cling, plastic dust in the air. That's why I'm wearing a mask and still sneezing later. Time for round 2 on the CNC. To keep everything perfectly in place on the machine bed, I first milled a pocket in the shape of the motor bracket. Then I placed the bracket inside and glued it down with super glue. I'm milling out pockets for 2 M8 nuts in each bracket. And yep, they drop right in on the first try. To finish it off, I cut an M4 thread for a small locking clip. That helps keep things nice and centered later on. The locking clip is 3D printed on my bamboo lab in bright red PETG with 100% info. For the next one wheel version so, I probably go with something tougher like PP or nylon, since they hold up better in the long run and I like things that don't fall apart. The finished motor mount doesn't look that bad, right? But the real question is, will it actually hold up? I mean, it is made of plastic. To bolt the motor to the mount, I need a custom screw. Since I don't have the perfect one on hand, I'm modifying the screw that comes with the motor. It's a bit too long though, so I'm trimming it down on the lace until it fits my frame. Hot tip, don't grab the hot part, learn that the hard way. Next up, I'm printing the center bracket, the part that connects the left and right sides of the mainframe. Just like the earlier components, I'm using PETG here as well. Once the support material is off, I melt some threaded inserts into the bracket, so I can bolt everything down nice and tight later on. Did you know, PETG is basically the same stuff used in reusable water bottles. Some makers actually recycle those bottles into filament and then 3D printed even more parts with it. Next up, I'm building the mainframe. <laughs> Hold on tight, I'm going to build it out of paper. Yep, you heard that right. I'm taking a bit of gamble here. Since I got these panels for free and we are still in the prototyping phase, I decided to take the risk and use paper. Well, not regular paper. These are called HPL panels, high pressure laminate. Basically, it's layers of paper compressed under extreme pressure and infused with resin to create a super tough abrasion resistant and waterproof material. And the best part? It smells beautiful. So why use it? Because it's perfect for a prototype. And did I mention it was free? I already have proper aluminium panels waiting for the final version. But since those are serious expensive, I hold off on cutting into them for now. Just like before, I didn't cut all the way through with the CNC, so once again it's bandsaw time. After that, I use a surfacing bit to remove the coating from the other side and get a nice clean finish. Then it's time for a whole bunch of holes, all drilled into the sides of the frame and of course, each one needs an M4 thread. Looks quick and easy in the video, right? 
in reality about 20 or 30 sweats per side and it took me an entire evening. After that I had to manually remove a few rounded corners that I didn't account for in the CAD model. I keep asking myself, should I really build the mainframe out of paper? I mean sure, it's just a prototype. But I do want to write this thing and knocking out my teeth to save a few bucks is not exactly the plan. So I clamped a piece of that HPL material in the vise, give it a light tap with the hammer and boom, it snapped right away. Let's just say, my trust in the stuff took a bit of a hit. Turns out, it's really not made for impact. To at least improve things for the prototype, I decided to go with a sandwich structure. HPL in the inside, reinforced with an aluminium plate on the outside. Hopefully, that make it strong enough. What do you think? What do you trust the setup? I did honestly love to hear your opinion. To put it to the test, I glued a piece of HPL to some aluminium and started hammering. It took around 20 solid hits to break. And only because the glue gave up first. Not bad for a paper board, huh? These aluminium plates usually come with a protected film, so the visible side doesn't get scratched. But in my case, scratches are just a matter of time once the thing hits the road. So I removed the film on purpose, to embrace that brushed look from the start. Even so, this is still a part of the prototype, I'm already really pleased with the aesthetics. It might have started as a functional solution, but visually it's definitely a win. At first, I planned to mill the button plate out of a solid 5mm metal sheet, but honestly, I have no idea what I was thinking when I designed that. What kind of nonsense was I on that day? So instead, I went with the sandwich structure again. A 2mm metal plate on the inside, reinforced with a 3mm PETG layer on the outside. Next up, the foot pads. I made these from the same HPL material in black. It has exactly the clean look I was going for. The downside, HPL is seriously heavy. Its density is way higher than something like standard spruce plywood. So yes, it's strong and looks great, but it adds a lot of extra weight. That's why I went with it just for the prototype. Now I know better for next time. Just like before, these parts need to be milled from both sides. To do that, I first machined a perfectly matching pocket into the baseboard. So I can fix the foot pads in place using tape and super glue. As you can see here, HPL made a huge mess and the dust definitely not something you want to breathe in. What material would you recommend for my next foot plates? Plywood? A fully 3D printed version? And if so, what filament would you trust? Or maybe there's a material I haven't even considered yet. If you got any ideas, I did love to hear them. The front and rear bumpers are engineered with a positive fit design, meaning they lock into place precisely but are still engineered for quickly and easy swaps. They constantly drag along the ground, so they wear out quickly. The support material with its tree-like structure looks absolutely wild. Honestly, it was nearly too cool to break off. But what's in the way has got to go. About a year ago I bought a laser module, but never used it. Well, today was the day, it finally came in handy. I removed the spindle from my CNC and mounted the module in a bit of a makeshift setup. So don't be surprised if it looks a little bit wobbly. Still, it cut through the grip tape very cleanly. And thanks to the dust extraction, there wasn't much smell either. To wrap things up, I've got a few small parts to knock out real quick. Voila! The one wheel is now fully mise en place. All the parts are laid out and ready and I can't wait to begin the assembly. I never put this much effort into preparing components with great attention to detail. I really hope it pays off. Before the final assembly begins, I've got to glue together the main frame and its aluminium reinforcement. I start by lightly sanding the bounding surfaces and cleaning them with isopropyl alcohol. Then I carefully tape off any areas I want to keep glue free. Once the epoxy sets, it's a nightmare to remove. For adhesive, I'm using a two-part epoxy, one I have trusted in past builds. Heads up, it smells terrible and is even toxic. If you're enjoying the video so far, I did really appreciate it if you hit the like button or even subscribe. This project has taken over 6 months, a lot of money and most of my free time. 
Has it sparked some joy for you? Or maybe you've got ideas, improvements or specified requests? Drop that in the comments below. I read and replay to every single one. And of course, here's a close-up of me peeling the film of a cheat. You can't skip this cliche in any YouTube video after all. The grip tape I'm using on my foot plates here is just standard skateboard tape. I picked up a 2 meter wall on Emerson, not too pricey, so I've got plenty for future projects. However, I've seen some close-ups of one wheels which much more aggressive, grippier surfaces than what I'm using. I'm hoping mine will hold up well enough. The orange pad you see here is my custom built foot pad sensor. If you're curious about it, check out part 2 of this series. I dive deeper into it there. The entire reboard can be assembled with a single hex key, almost, except for the motor mount. That one needs a slightly larger hex key. But apart from that, every single bolt tightens with one and the same hex key. That means on a wide, you only need two hex keys total. That wasn't planned. It just happened because the bolts I needed come in a set. And I wanted to use them all where possible. But I have to admit, you'll see in a moment, I actually used way too many screws. At work we call that Angstschrauben. It literally means fear screws. I did mention it before, but I really tried whenever possible to design everything so that the part fit together, in a positive fit design, so the loads don't rely solely on screws. That has several advantages, but most importantly it means I can use M4 screws everywhere and assemble the board with great precision, without needing to fine tune right angles or parallel lines. My shiny snow name motor original had a single central axle to mount it to the frame. I wasn't too happy with the setup. So I designed a motor mount inspired by the mounts used on premium boards from float wheel or fun wheel. This new mount is much steadier and better to handling forces than attaching the axle directly to the frame. The red locking clip you see on the motor mount, I think it looks pretty cool. But it actually served two important functions. First, it stops the frame from compressing at the middle slot when vertical forces act on the motor mount. Second, it locks the axle bolt in place, so even if it starts to loosen, the clip keeps it from spinning off. So, in the worst case scenario, the bolt might come loose and degrade ride quality a bit. But it won't create a dangerous situation. At least, that's the theory. I already covered the electronics and how they are connected in my first one wheel video. So if you are curious, definitely check it out. What you see here is just the rough install of the electronic components in the board. One major tweak I had to do. Extend the balancer cables running from the battery to the BMS. First red and yellow wires, 18 of them. Each required soldering twice. That's 36 solder joints, which took me a few hours to do properly. You've got to be super caution here, even so they are all positive wires, you absolutely cannot let them touch. Each wire corresponds to the different cells with a single different voltage. If they touch, the battery will try to balance itself in an instant, and that usually ends in a nasty short circuit. Most one wheels I have seen position the BMS on the same side as the battery. Makes sense, you don't want meter long balancer cables running through the board like I ended up with here, but hey. What it is, is what it is. Gotta say, my oversized BMS paired with my massive motor controller looks pretty badass. Forgive me if the wiring isn't 100% pro level need, but trust me, I gave it my all. And when it comes to electronics, I've still got a lot to learn. Even if it's not perfect, I'm confident it will work safely. No shorts, no shock hazard, just reliable performance. The LED covers at the front and back are purely aesthetic for now. Behind them, there's actually no LEDs installed yet. Plus, I'm not sure it's smart to be easily spotted from 100 meters away riding an e-skateboard. In Germany, it's illegal to use this on streets or in parks. So, I'm keeping things low-key and sticking to understatement. It's done! After a half year of work, the board is finally fully assembled and standing on my table. 
I never imagined it would feel this good. It was so much work, but also an absolute blast, more than I ever accepted. I originally thought this would be a project I did wrap up in a few weeks. Never did I plan on pewing this much time, money and sweat into it. Yeah, it sounds cliche, but I freaking love it. Okay, hold on, let's not make this more epic than it actually was. Before even the first test ride, I spent three more days on the software to get everything driving ready. Still, there was a setting I just couldn't get right. I didn't even know what a Wonry was supposed to feel like. So yeah, my first attempts were shaky, really shaky. But hey, see for yourself. Oh no, it wasn't me who looked smooth in that clip. That was Yuki, riding like a pro. My first attempts, total chaos. I was constantly asking myself, is it supposed to feel like this? Is the board setup wrong? I'm going to faceplant any second now. I had no clue what to accept. When I discovered the street and chill preset, everything suddenly changed. The board started to feel flowy and with every meter I got more comfortable. At some point it was so much fun that I even flee the drone while riding. Not trying to brag, I was going really slow, but man, it feels amazing. For now I'm really happy with the result, but keep in mind this is just a prototype. In the next video I built a brand new battery using high quality cells. I'll CNC machine the mainframe out of solid aluminium and same for the motor mount. And overall I tweak the design, make it stronger and reduce the weight wherever possible. Thanks so much for following along this journey. I hope you'll be there next time when version 2 of the board becomes reality. See you soon.